This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Super Bowl 57 week is finally here. We are less than one week from the game, which means it is time to break down this game as in depth as we possibly can throughout this week. Four separate shows breaking down Super Bowl 57 beginning here today. We're going to have Joe Ostrowski on. We're going to have Joe on because I know my weaknesses as a better. I am not creative. I do not understand exotic markets at all. So Joe does. We're going to have Joe on, pick his brain around all the weird, fun props you can bet for this year's game and get you set for Super Bowl 57. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Joe Ostrowski. Check him out on Twitter, at Joe Ostrowski, and find him Live this week on BeckQL Daily from Glendale, Arizona, broadcasting not too far from the stadium. Joe, uh, appreciate the time for today. How you doing? Uh, fantastic. It's a little chilly here right now at the moment, Jim. It's only 61 degrees and sunny. I was hoping for 70. It looks like, oh, the wait, Friday, 76? Oh, it's looking good. Oh, man. See, well, you know, I'm, I'm in Chicago, so yeah. I'm like... I, I, I reached that point in the winter. I'm like, all right, why do I live here again? I right. hate this. You've dealt with that in the past when you were over at Northwestern. Like so, once you get to January, February, you're like, is there any end in sight? But the problem is, Joe, I, I experienced this last year. FanDuel had their World Fantasy Football Championship in Scottsdale. And I was in Syracuse at the mm -hmm. time. And because I was going from Syracuse in December to Scottsdale, I didn't check the weather. I was like, hey, you know, it's the desert. It's going to be warm. It's going to be warmer than Syracuse. Yeah. I'm just going to pack some shorts and stuff. I forgot <laughs> that it's a desert and uh -huh. didn't account for how cold the nights get. So one of my like coldest experiences of my life was in <laughs> Scottsdale that weekend because I didn't pack accordingly. So did you at least like pack appropriate things for desert nights or are you as dumb as I am? I did not pro probably not as much as I should have. It mm -hmm. kind of hit me uh, when I was checking in about how long I'm here. She's like, "All right, we've got you for five nights." I was like, "Oh crap, I'm really here five <laughs> nights." Uh, yeah, I, I, it was a bit alarming when we left okay, five thirty a.m. local time to go yeah. over to the sports book to do the show. It's like, oh, I need my coat. I'm like, but yeah. I didn't really plan for this. But thankfully, I brought like. I brought pairs of jeans and hoodies, unlike you. <laughs> you yeah. check the weather. I had I had to like try to buy a FanDuel hoodie and they ran out. Like they they sold out oh, because geez. it was so cold. And it's like genius marketing, obviously, but like I I'm an idiot and yeah. you, like didn't get there in time. So I just froze and I like they had like two concerts. One was Nelly, the other one was someone, I don't know, some other person after that. And I I left. <laughs> I, I went to Nelly. I, I I suffered through that to watch Nelly because I'm a millennial. Um, but like, Good. you know, I couldn't stick for the second one because I just I just I I flubbed it, man. You know? Nice. Were the St. Lunatics in? Or how uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> But it was fun. It was a good time. I uh, definitely good. enjoyed that. So we're gonna talk to Joe about all the weird markets you can bet for Super Bowl 57. Because like I said, this is not my strength. And we've got four or five days to talk about this game. So I wanted to talk to Joe, get his his thoughts on the exotic markets for this for this week. We'll talk some uh, anthem stuff. We'll talk halftime, but also, you know, like MVP markets and stuff like that. We'll dive into that mm -hmm. and get Joe's thoughts on those in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts, as mentioned. Four separate Super Bowl 57 shows this week. JJ Zacharyson tomorrow, Pamela Maldonado on Wednesday, Ryan Williams Thursday, all breaking down various aspects of this game, getting their thoughts on how to bet this game and where to find value at FanDuel Sportsbook and elsewhere. We'll put those up. Up, uh, on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on the FanDuel YouTube page after the fact. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets with FanDuel's Kick of Destiny. All you have to do is bet $5 on Super Bowl 57. And if Gronk kicks a field goal live during the game, you'll get a piece <laughs> of $10 million in bonus bets. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. Gronk kick 
you win. It's as simple as that. So don't miss out on the kick of destiny on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Just place any $5 bet on the Super Bowl. You get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets. Then tune in live during the game to see Gronk's kick of destiny. Make every moment more a FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus in select states. Minimum $5 wager required. Award may vary. Minimum $5 projected max $20. Bonus award issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. All participants are eligible for bonus award. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. And in New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and why joe i can tell you're a pro because you took the time as i was doing the disclaimer to take off your credentials you knew you had the full two or so minutes or whatever to take it comfy I, <laughs> and i appreciated it i just wanted to let you know that i i saw the pro in you coming out right there well i, I well i saw myself in the video i'm like I'm, you look like an idiot why is this thing still around <laughs> your neck so i, I took See, that off and you I saw thinking, idiot. I saw pro consummate professional Joe Strowski showing up in, in the flesh right there uh, in, in that moment for sure. You can tell you've hosted a show for uh, a sports book before. I, I get it. I, I mean, the, the reality is that I was just sitting here thinking that, that one Jim Sonis has gotten too big time for me, like with, with the impressive open, he's got all the reads and the sponsorships. You're doing all these shows every week, having great guests, Ryan Williams, Pam Maldonado. It's, it's too much for me. It's a little ah. too much for me to handle. So it's getting a little hot and bothered. So I had to take the See, credential off. The, this is why you're the more professional than me. If I were thinking, I would have, I would have gotten a, a reunion between you and Ryan because um, you and Ryan oh, used to know yeah, that you've worked together. I should have thought about that. And I didn't, I dropped the ball. Well, I guess I'll have him on my show tomorrow. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> it works for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love it. Okay, so let's dive in here and talk about the Chiefs and the Eagles. Super Bowl 57 as we pull up the odds here over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And Joe, obviously, we're going to talk about the intricate props in a second, but the way you view the overall game is going to play a role in how you view the prop market too because you can kind of make take those assumptions and relay them into the prop market as well. So when you look at this game overall, What's your view of Chiefs versus Eagles? Sure. And to, and to your point, you could like one specific angle and think, yeah. oh, there's a prop that fits that. Right. Or you can find six or seven props that fit right. any specific angle if you don't like the price on a, on a particular one. Uh, first off, I think I, I know it's not the biggest move because we're not talking about going through key numbers, but it is certainly notable to me that the odds makers came out and almost all of them in agreement. And they said the Chiefs are the better team once we got our Super Bowl matchup. And then the early betters in the first 15 minutes, meaning the sharper betters, uh, they came in and said, no, you guys are wrong. The Eagles are the better team. They should be favored. We're going to bet it. Now, since it's a Super Bowl, and in many cases, they're allowing 20K per bet uh, a pop there. They kept betting it until they made the Eagles the favorite. I find that fascinating that they've mm -hmm. lined up on different sides. And over the past week, I've heard a number of bookmakers come out and say, not say, hey, we're lining up with the Chiefs. They came out and said, we were wrong. We hung a bad yeah. number because yeah. there is so much respect for the betting market. So I think that's fascinating. Another really interesting angle. I don't know how you feel about this. Now, I'll give you a pick on the game. But do I have... Am I this, the strong opinion that I do on some of these props? No. Yeah. And it's one of those events where you have over a thousand options. You li literally have over a thousand options that if you don't have a strong opinion, you think it's a complete coin toss. You don't have to bet the side. Correct. You really don't. There are a number of ways that you can attack this. Uh, the health and the amount of information that we get this week will be interesting on both quarterbacks, and of course, the Chiefs receivers with Juju, 
and Hardman and Tony and, and what, what happens there. The most interesting aspect that I find in these in these games, in these seasons uh, that these two teams have put together. Let's look at the biggest strength for the Chiefs. We all know what it is. The, the guy on Thursday that's going to be named the NFL MVP, you got Pat Mahomes. And then you have an Eagles defense that has a fantastic resume, but they haven't faced good quarterbacks this year. Like, I'm sorry. Some Eagles fans are sick of saying it. Like, oh, you're not giving them enough credit. No, you, you give them plenty of credit. But this yeah. is also part of the story that right. they had one of the easiest paths that we've ever seen to a Super Bowl in, in a one-armed man in Purdy and, and Josh Johnson out there. And before that, it was Daniel Jones. And if, and really, if we want to go back over the last three months, it wasn't just those quarterbacks that they faced. We're talking about Webb and Dalton and Dak, who led the league in interceptions this year, and Justin Fields and Daniel Jones again. And Tannehill before getting injured. He, they did face Rodgers, but also Matt Ryan, Heineke, Mills. Those are all the quarterbacks they've gone against for the last three months. So you have the chief strength and a really good Eagles defense, but they haven't faced quality quarterback play. And then you have the biggest strength of the Eagles. is I. They're strong everywhere. I mean, the roster is so deep. It's it, what Howie Roseman has put together just – awesome to make yeah. another Super Bowl run. But I think we'd all agree that the rushing offense, including Hurts, is a strength of that team. And can the Kansas City defense has played has faced only one top 10 rushing offense according to DVOA and that was San Francisco. So uh, I look at the strengths of each of these offenses and the defenses, while somewhat impressive to a lesser extent Kansas City but they, they haven't been in this position. Yeah. So I understand why there's been a lot of play on the over early on this week. You asked me for a play. Um, I'm probably not going to bet it, but I would pick, uh, I do pick Kansas City. But yeah. as, as we already mentioned, I'm going to be more focused on some of the other ways to bet the game. So is part of your hesitancy on the Chiefs? Re like is, is 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 part of that because you respect the market like the bookmakers do where we saw that sharp money come in on the, on the eagles and that tells you that hey these people who are investing lots of money and betting right away which, which mm -hmm. is generally a sign of like uh, you know uh, how tuned in you are and stuff like that does that hesitancy make you or does that information make you more hesitant to bet the Chiefs and go into other markets with this game a little bit, yeah. But more of it, I is the health, yeah. The health of these quarterbacks. We saw Hertz's shoulder is still not a hundred percent from when he was injured playing Chicago, and, and he ended up missing a couple of games. He still hobbled, and then Mahomes. The interesting thing about Mahomes is uh, for him to come back off the high ankle that we all know was not a high ankle <laughs> that they were playing up that a little bit, but. How is he at the end of that game? Yeah. If they, if the Chiefs had another series, how would Mahomes have looked? He was telling he them was to kick, like he when told he was them shoved to kick out of bounds, that play. Yeah, right. Yes, he was. When he was shoved out of bounds, do you think he could have gone out there for another series? Probably, but what right. would he have looked like? He would have looked like now that Jags got... game where he's hopping on one foot. Yeah, probably. I agree with you. And so we really, we really don't know. Now, I, I'd also add that. Once we get to Sunday, that's going to be a little over three weeks from the injury. Right. And for your high ankles, they usually say four to six weeks. So he should be good. But how much did, did the game on championship Sunday hurt him? So I, I'd say more about the the health of the quarterbacks is is on that. And then, I'll, I mean, I can't get past the strength of schedule. I'm right. sorry. They, right. they took care of business. They squashed teams all year, but that's the other part where I'm a little hesitant. Not so much the Super Bowl experience, because we've learned over the years that that just hasn't mattered as right. much. But I, I'd say it's more about um, the Eagles not facing high-level offenses all season. So part of the hesitation here is around the health of the quarterbacks. We go to the MVP market over on FanDuel, and right now you've got uh, Mahomes at plus 130, Hurts at plus 130 as well. And if we are skeptical mm. of the health of the quarterbacks, that could open up value elsewhere in the market. So, Joe, 
do you see anything you like here in the MVP market? Or are you staying away from that one? I was so annoyed last week with the MVP market because I, I understand why this was the case. I just strongly disagreed with it. And I'll get into that in a second. Most sports books had Hertz as the favorite. Mm-hmm. And I understand the idea team that's favored, the favorite for the MVP has to be the starting quarterback. I get all that. I thought that was moronic. And I think the, the market is pretty dead on right now. So the Eagles are favored one and a half, but the MVP number is the same for both starting quarterbacks, both quarterbacks, MVP contenders all season long. Uh, the reason that I was annoyed is just when, when we paint a picture of how the MVP is won, when you look at the Kansas City side, and if they're going to win the game, how many players can legitimately win the MVP? I, I think those days when we were growing up watching the NFL where you would see these outlier performances, like the other – yesterday, uh, before jumping on the flight, I, I got lost in NFL Network when I was supposed to yep. be packing because they were doing <laughs> the, the half-hour recap, the highlights yeah. of every Super Bowl. Yep. And – I, I was like late nineties to early two thousands. I was like, these guys are never winning MVP. The likes of Dexter Jackson, that's right. not happening. Larry Brown, that's not happening anymore. It's quarterback. Two of the last four years, we've seen the, the number one receiver, meaning the volume guy. And then once in a while, we're going to see an edge rusher. Mm-hmm. I would think. But outside of that, it's very, very difficult. And I was annoyed that Hertz was the favorite because I think we can tell a story where a number of Eagles win. If it's yeah. not the quarterback, you could go to Devontae. You could go to A.J. Brown. It's been a long time since a running back. I think Terrell Davis was the last one about 25 years ago. But maybe Miles Sanders if he had a crazy good game. And then Hassan Reddick has been on a tear. What about Sweat, Hargrave? They were third all time in the regular season in sacks. So one of those pass rushers on the Eagles could certainly win. I mean, I just rattled off, you know, seven, eight guys. And on the Chiefs side, I think it's three. I think it'd be Mahomes, Kelsey, or Chris Jones. Mm -hmm. And that that's the list for me. Um, So what I did is Championship Sunday uh, that morning. I was like, look, I, I I did have a lot of conviction that it was going to be the Eagles and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. So I bet uh, on that Sunday morning, Kelsey at 28, Devontae at 50, and Chris Jones at 125. So I do think there is some value in the market. And, you know, when Nick Foles was the Super Bowl winning quarterback, he was 4-1. to I don't know that we're ever going to see something like that, and that's clearly not the case here. Like Then there would be value on the quarterback, but I just don't see it. And it's a coin toss game. We're plus 130 on both sides. I would take a look at some of the players that I just mentioned. Kelsey, Devontae, Chris Jones. You think A.J. Brown's going to have his first big performance in the in the playoffs, which we have not seen yet. Uh, he would be worth a look, too, because uh, those receivers, I think voters are understanding how much how, how much more impactful they now are in games, and they're giving them a, an, a legitimate chance at winning this award. And I think the gap between Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown is – the most important part there, like it shouldn't be that big. Um, nope. AJ Brown, 18 to one, Dev- uh, Devontae Smith, 31 to one. You look at their market shares, even if you include week one, it's been pretty even. I know yep. that AJ Brown has had the edge uh, justifiably, but like you're talking about a one game sample. Is AJ Brown actually twice as likely to win as Devontae Smith? Probably not. Um, no. You could say AJ Brown's overvalued based on that, but you could also say that Devontae Smith is undervalued. I think that they're two separate ways of viewing that potentially. Um, and I think that the point about like, can you realistically tell yourself a story where this guy's MVP? That's, that's the process you have to undergo before you can actually bet something like this. I think that's an important thing to mention here for sure. I, I think we have learned in recent years, Jim, and this is something that I would have argued against uh, as recently as four years ago. But I think what we have learned is even if you have, the idea of a, a receiver being the MVP. Oh, well, if they do get two touchdowns and 100 yards, somebody's throwing it. Right. Well, well, Brady didn't get it over Edelman. Right. Right. Like, so last year, Stafford was was a great story. And Cooper Cup ends up getting it over Matthew Stafford. Right. So we are learning that that these receivers, even if you have a great quarterback, you know, 
and use great loosely with Stafford there. But even if you have a really good or great quarterback, it doesn't mean it's automatically going to go to the quarterback. It could go to that receiver. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I was thinking back, you're talking about the running back stuff and it's been 25 years or whatever. I was thinking back to the Chiefs first win. Damian Williams should have won it and did not. And I like Isaiah Pacheco at 50 to one this week, but that is in my mind. Williams having that monster wow. game and not winning yeah. it. That that's okay. that's present. That thought. It's it's present. I've got me. I've got one for you too, which is why okay, we'll talk about Pacheco in a few minutes. But okay. this is why I'm when when people bring up running back, I'm like, shut up. You're wasting your money. <laughs> because I had James White when he scored three touchdowns, oh. including the game winning touchdown for the Patriots. You know, and it time. still ended up going to Brady. Yeah. 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 Yep. I, I don't blame you there. So you mentioned Pacheco. There are a lot of other props here available. We got some like weird ones, like with the on field product, like FanDuel has um, a lot of different stuff available for it. don't bet the coin toss. I'm just going to say that, like, don't bet the coin toss, save your money. Don't pay the 2% hold <laughs> idiot tax on that one. But Joe, I know, I know. what else you got as far as like on field stuff or props for Super Bowl 57? Um, I've got a bunch, but as long as okay. you, you got, you have the specials on the screen right now. So I want to yep. jump to that and I understand why it has long odds, but I've, I talked about this one on the show last week and it is so damn tempting. And I understand why the odds are long. Pacheco 50 plus receiving yards and a touchdown can be rushing or receive. That's still 14 to one there, right? There it, it is. is. Boom. I see yep. it. All right. Um, look, he had a, he was involved in the pass game last week. He's not a big uh, pass catching running back. That's been proven throughout the year. I, I believe the highest number of targets he was getting was three, but last week it was six. He caught five of them. He was certainly involved. You never know week to week. Is it going to be rushing or receiving? I, I couldn't resist Jim at 14 to one Yeah, at 14 to one. For a game that is projected to have a number of touchdowns, and I just need 50 plus receiving yards, which he hit last week. Right. Maybe some dump offs, pressure from the, this Eagles front. At 14 to 1, I just couldn't pass up. And I understand. I understand that, that it could end up being a McKinnon game. And it was last year. He led the playoffs, all the playoffs in uh, rushing yards. Um, but. Um, yeah, it was Pacheco last time. He was getting all the usage, and uh, I, I couldn't help myself. What do you think? I think that's fair because you mentioned the six targets. That was double his previous high. Um, right. His snap rate was the highest it's been since McKinnon had that big game against the Broncos. Well, that seemed to shift things a lot. Um, the only like little bit of uncertainty that I have is Clyde Edwards-Elair, uh, activated from IR today. I don't think he'll have a role. I... I feel pretty okay saying that that CEH will not have a role this game, but there's always that possibility. Like it's a 5% <laughs> chance, which lowers the odds of hits by a little bit at least. Um, so I think that that weighs in my mind. I think that his red zone Pacheco's red zone role is better than perception. Got about 27% red zone share uh, in the game. Yeah. The CEH outer limited, like I said, six targets, they get him pretty creative targets and like, this is part of my thought process with Pacheco in the conference championship was okay. McKinnon is awful uh, when they're in shotgun. He can't run. I mean, most, most running backs are worse in shotgun. McKinnon's success rate is like 24%. Whereas Pacheco gets worse in shotgun. His success rate goes to like 47%, but it's like mm -hmm. still very good. So if they'd be more shotgun heavy with Mahomes banged up, then that benefits Pacheco's snap rate. The concern I have is, CEH being back, Mahomes healthier now, which means they could go under center more if they want to. So I'm on board with Pacheco very broadly. I took, what was it? Um, I think I took his receiving yardage prop at like 15 and a half. I think it was the, just the receiving yardage prop. Um, yeah. But I think that this is, because these two actually correlate together. Because if he busts off a long reception, that could lead to a touchdown, in which case you could check both in one play. So I actually think that's an interesting number for sure. Don't you, the total yards is getting out of control. Yeah, I was oh, yeah. considering it, but we're at 68 and a half, 70 some places. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. It, it feels like you're getting some security, but not, not really when the number's that high. I think the running back usage on both sides is fascinating yeah. because you have Pacheco. Is he going to be, get the majority of the work again? 
Right. And then on the Eagles side, the Gainwell number is probably gone. You know, it feels like it. Like, okay, great. You did you performed given more opportunity. That's wonderful. Yeah, we were up by four touchdowns. So right. is what we expect to be a tightly contested game is Gainwell even going to get those sorts of opportunities? So uh, I, the running back usage on both sides is very interesting. I'll roll through a few other uh, few other yeah. props I have on the KC side. Uh, Travis Kelsey. And if we get any bad news with those receivers, the receiving yards prop is probably going to jump. We're at 78 and a half right now. And that just happened to be the exact number he had in the AFC championship (laughs) game of 78. But if we look over the last couple of years, and I'm not trying to be game log guy here, but look, I mean, who else does Mahomes trust right now? And over the last couple of years, even when Tyreek was there, we're looking at most recent games, 98, 95, 96, 108, 133, 118, 109. I mean, he's going to trust Kelsey. And if you want an anytime touchdown, it's near even money, depending where you look. So I don't think that's a problem. Um, first touchdown for Chiefs games, I believe it was Kelsey in nine out of 19 games. If you're looking for um, some better odds there. So I like the Kelsey over on the yardage, over 78 and a half. Tight ends are interesting. The Goddard number is bumping up, and I think for good reason. 49 and a half. He, he's gone over his uh, receiving prop in 10 of 14 games. You can attack this Chiefs defense over the middle. They gave up the second most uh, touchdowns to the air over the middle in the NFL. Goddard props I like. Hassan Reddick has been on a tear, man, and he's going to be opposite Wiley, who has uh, – was the most penalized offensive tackle this year. Okay. And we've got Sheffers rough in this game who loves to throw flags. I, I just think Reddick, I was shocked at some of these props, Jim, because if you go, will Reddick have more sacks than Chris Jones? I know you look at it like, oh boy, I don't know. That's going to be tough. I, I'd put right. them fairly close, but the numbers plus 190 on Reddick to get more. Right. Uh, Reddick against Frank Clark, it's plus 125. So I I, I think Reddick, I, I mentioned him as possible long shot MVP. Like I, I could see that one getting home. Uh, my, my EP, Paul Aspen on BetQL Daily, he bet Reddick at the start of the playoffs 250 to one. Wow. And I really wish I had that ticket, man. <laughs> um, a, a couple others that I'm looking at uh, as we roll through the props. You know, both of these offense – Offenses. One of the uh, the biggest narratives we always get is when Andy Reid has extra time to prepare, and yeah. there's a reason we bring it up. I mean, on the script, they're always fantastic off the bye. Now, facing a better defense, I I understand that, but you also have a uh, an Eagles team that always gets off to fast starts. Number one all year long in scoring in the first half at over 18 points per game. In fact, uh, these are these two teams are one and two in the NFL in first half points. So. Uh, will a team score in the first six minutes is plus money. And that surprised me. I know typically get slower starts of Super Bowls, but I saw in that plus 115, plus 120 range, some mm-hmm. sort of score. I I could see that. So I was looking at that. And, and again, like you can correlate these all sorts of ways. You can do team totals in the first quarter, in the first half, or game totals, all sorts of stuff. But uh, those are uh, the props that jump out to me early in the week. Yeah, the scoring prop, I believe, uh, first six minutes. um, That's interesting because it's Mm -hmm. so hard to generate a score that quickly. Um, And that's why you always see first quarter totals being super, super low and stuff like that. But I think that's kind of accounted for a plus 118. Uh, It's a very high hold market um, (laughs) here. And that's always important to keep in mind. But I don't mind that given the things you outlined as far as the way these two teams operate early in games. Yeah, there's it's it's going to be interesting. Like if this if it starts slow, yeah, I wonder what how close we are going to get to that total. Right. It's yeah, it's going to be fascinating. And what one of the more popular bets, and I didn't give it out because it's just juiced so heavily to the second half. You have two teams that start quickly, but um, one of my favorite bets I, I do most years, but now I see the juice is gone. Is which half will be higher scoring? Oh. Uh, if you bet the second half, you also get overtime. 
But I, I oh. mostly see that juiced at minus one thirty. Now it used to be even money, and then it was a then it was a really good bet, especially if you have a team chasing something like right. that. But um, it'll be it, a lot of interesting things about this. Also, we Hertz has not trailed in a game since November. You know <laughs> like, what 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 happens if he's down double digits to Mahomes? How is right. that going to look? Right. Yeah, we haven't seen them have to push for four quarters in a long time. And I think that's an important thing to remember, too. So uh, a lot of interesting ways to play that one. I think the the um, the erratic props are very interesting because if you want to bet the MVP, like you said, I think that's that's probably I think the value has gone there. I think that you want to look for the yeah. sack markets, like you mentioned. I think those are if you mm-hmm. want action on Hassan Reddick, I think those would be the preferred ways for me to go. It would be the sack numbers. You talk about the, the sack versus numbers. I think those would be my preferred route for doing that, especially given it's it's him versus a lot of Chiefs guys, and the Chiefs guys are facing a really, really tough offensive line, which is a tough matchup for them. Mm-hmm. All right, Joe, let's open it up. Uh, Schoolyard nonsense. If you are looking for okay. halftime props, you are looking for anthem props, things that I'm going to lean on you, Joe, because I don't know. So when you're looking at All the right. full plethora of things you've got at your dispo- disposal here, where else are you seeing value uh, for betting this game? All right. All right. Just tell me when, when you want me to shut up. So uh, Chris Stapleton, <laughs> two minutes, five seconds. I'm very annoyed today because I, I kind of set the scene and I explained to you how security everywhere and how it's hard to get close to the stadium. Yeah. So yeah. My, my dream, Jim, was, oh, my God, Soundtrack. we're going to be broadcasting all week. All week from right outside the stadium, it's right next door. I'm going to be able to hear the rehearsal on Thursday. You, th- this is all I, a long con. You took, you know, you were like, "Hey, Beck QL, send me to the Super Bowl." I, I, I think we should be there on Radio Row. When in in, in actuality, is because you wanted to scout out Soundcheck. That's that's true, right? Yeah, Radio Row's over in Phoenix. The stadium's yeah. in Glendale. Yeah, but- we don't need those other people. They can have Media Row all, all themselves. It's a dome. Am I going to be able to hear it? I don't know. I, this is good. I'm just, I'm on edge about this. I don't oh. know if I'm going to be able to hear the rehearsal. So we'll <laughs> see. Stapleton is set at two minutes and five seconds. The number has not moved over the past week. It is juiced to the over right now. Everybody who I know is a Chris Stapleton fan, and then I keep asking. They're like, over, over, over. I'm like, well, you know, what is he really going to make it about him? You know, he might think, hey, it's it's a, it's about the country. It's about the game. Like, it's not about me. They're like, trust me. I've seen him in concert so many times. Over, over, over. Well, the last time we saw over 205 was a couple years ago when it went 217. I was looking in the last 13. The the only uh, – the amount of times that we've seen it go, gone over two minutes and five seconds is three out of the last 13 years. So don't just think, oh, well, he's going to drag it out. He's he's going to do a solo, whatever, with his guitar. Um, I don't know. That's really long. But everybody I talk to that that are fans of Stapleton, that watch him, are like he's going over that number. So I don't know. I, I'll check <laughs> after the rehearsal. Hopefully, I can hear it. I got to find a way to get to get right. my, uh, to get over there and uh, and hear that. But I, I don't know. So uh, what else is going on with that? Oh, uh, there's a bet on on the hat. Like my first yeah. thought without knowing much about him was, oh, black. But but black was the, the big underdog. It was any other color is a big favorite, I believe, minus 600. And then if you do a quick Google Images search, you're going to see, oh, yeah, every picture is in brown. He's wearing a brown hat all the time. So that's probably yeah. going to be the same. So you, you understand why that's the favorite. Okay, who's shown first during the anthem? During the anthem, who's going to be shown first? Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's the favorite, big mouth guy. You know, everybody knows who he is, bigger star. Fine, that makes sense. Split screen is 10 to 1, Jim. There we go. Split, there we that's go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Split screen, Travis and Jace Kelsey. Also, this is the Andy Reid Bowl. It is yep. pretty close on which head coach is shown first. Why would they show Sirianni before they show Andy Reid? That wouldn't make any sense to me. Reid's minus 130. I don't think that's that bad. It's a little bit of juice, but it's the Andy Reid bow, one of the big narratives, okay? Um, You know, tied in with the anthem. I find it interesting. There's no value here, but I just – it's a talking point. Will a scoring drive be less than the length of the national anthem? Oh, wow. 
Yes is minus 300. Now, I do think it's going to happen whether we're talking about – you don't think that we'll have a scoring drive less than two minutes? Well. Field goal, end of first half or end of the game. I mean, you got It could be like points. a – yeah. And like you think of a turnover like in, you know, plus territory, stuff like that. Yeah. 300 is a lot, though. It is. No, like, I'm, what's, not what's it. no? I'm not betting it. What's the no? What's no? Um, I forgot. If you think no? Would you bet no? I so if I'm thinking about it, well, if it's minus 300, that probably means like given the the hold in these markets, this is probably like plus 150 because they hate us, mm, um, and exactly. they don't want us to make money. <laughs> right, um, <laughs> but right. 250, I, I give it thought. I doubt it. I really doubt it's there based on the whole of these markets, but I would consider it for 250. Uh, Gatorade. I mean, we're we're still so far a number of days away from the game, almost a full week, and I feel like the value's gone on Gatorade. Because the favorite was plus 350, plus 400, and I'll tell you which ones for good reason. But now you look at the Gatorade, and it's like, okay, orange is – where are we? Ah, oh, Fandle's not bad. Fandle's not 250? bad. 250, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you why. Yellow, green – yellow slash green slash lime is the favorite at plus 150. The reason being that – uh, the Eagles just celebrated with that, and they're the favorite in the game. Oh, now, okay. at the Chiefs' last Super Bowl, they they dumped Andy Reid with orange, and that's why that's the second favorite at plus 250. But like a week or so ago, both of these were in the 3-1, to 4-1 to one range. So, yeah. I mean, these are the only color combos that people are even talking about because they've seen it. Maybe we should go off the board. I, I was talking about this on Big QL Daily. I, are we sure that whatever they have on the sideline – is in all of those Gatorade containers because I would think that different players have different preferences on the right. flavors. And I would think they have like every flavor and they're just right. marked and it's kind of random which one they grab. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, so take advantage of the variance, basically. I might go long shot. I, I always think purple gets disrespected. I drink purple Gatorade. Maybe that's why I feel that way. I just don't understand why people hate grape so much. It's always the long shot. Maybe there's a little bit of value in that market. Now, I know you, you throw it to me. You want me to talk about these exotics. It basically is what you're saying. You don't want to say it, so you want Joe Ostrowski to come out here and say, do, right. does he have action on Rihanna exposed butt cheek? Does he have action on Rihanna, Rihanna nipple? It's out there, Jim. These are things we can bet on, okay? Um, I'm I'm not going to mess around. We haven't – it's tough because she hasn't performed done a tour in so long. Yeah. Now, we don't know any kind of a set list. What's Rihanna going to do here? Yeah. Um, and, and she's got her own – I think she's got her own clothing line and makeup and all this stuff. So she could do anything. So I, I'm not messing around with – Eyeshadow, lipstick, yeah. hair color, staying away from that stuff, not doing exposed this or that. What are the uh, house rules on exposed butt cheek? Like, what percentage, uh, like, how? Do like, you really want me to read this? I don't. It's, if it's actually there, no, I desperately do not. <laughs> there are rules. It is there. They, okay, there are okay. rules. There's, there's rules on cleavage. And, but, you know, in the I've end, read far it's... too many house rules tabs the past whatever many years where I just like, I don't, I don't want it anymore. I'm just done. I'm okay. done. <laughs> okay. Here's what is interesting. So at number of songs. Yeah. I saw this last week at 10 and a half. Jim, we're at eight and a half now. Oh, is, is there a set list out there? That's what it makes me think that we're down to eight and a half. I would think just how quickly they, they go through these songs playing 30 seconds to a minute that that would go over. But I, I find that to be interesting right now. The favorite, for first song is Don't Stop the Music, which I kind of understand. That's minus 160. I would rather bet that as a last song at yeah. plus 200. But when I see one of her many hits being minus 160, it makes Someone me think knows. somebody knows something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think there's more value on This Is What You Came For, you know, featuring Calvin Harris. You know all about that. Plus 400. Yes. That's pretty good. She's got to start with a song that everybody knows. So you, you think Diamonds, Umbrella. Those are in that 5 to 1, 6 to 1 range. So uh, so that's that's where I'm looking there. But don't stop the music. I understand. It's, it, gets you, it gets you moving. Minus 160. God, when she's got so many chart toppers, when you see one at minus money six days out, it makes you think that somebody got work. Yeah. 
I I have a terrible process when it comes to because we do a, like a prop betting contest at our Super Bowl party mm-hmm. each year, and like mm-hmm. I'll look at the markets. If the markets don't tell me what I should pick, I will go to their Spotify and just see like, okay, which songs do I recognize? So yeah. I'm bad at this. Um, <laughs> don't stop the music would not be my first my first thought there. So I, I guess I'm surprised. Like I kind of am line in line with you where it's if it's song. minus 160, that says probably what you need to know. Yeah, probably. But don't you think that's a good song to end with? Kinda, yeah. Based on the actual lyrics, you know, like yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. And, and this is what you came for. Isn't that a good opener? Yeah, I think so. I'm just. I think that's great. <laughs> plus four hundred. I think it's even better now. If it's plus four hundred, it sounds fantastic to me. You know, I yeah. think that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> what else is what else is uh, novelty? Some of the stuff I haven't seen much commercial stuff posted yet. Yeah. Do they have a betting lineup for if Gronk will make the kick of destiny yet? <laughs> um, they might have FanDuel, I don't, but I, I don't know if they can legally. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's so. Can you explain that? I, I've I've seen the ads. I've heard yeah. the ads. Heard yeah. it on the show. So yeah. What exactly is going to happen with Gronk? He's going to kick a twenty-five yard field goal during the game okay. live. Like they're going to cut to him like in the commercial break, and wow. he's going to kick a twenty-five yard field goal. If he makes it, they give out ten million um, in total bets uh, or total like free bets and like that to everyone who plays a five dollar wager on the game. So like basically, the betting market would be: Will Gronk make a twenty five yard field goal in like in the commercial? I think he you probably think, will. I, I think yes. Do you think he's practiced? Do you think oh, yeah. he's practiced? I've seen the commercials. You too. think so? It's in commercials of him practicing. Come on, come on. Of course he's practiced. And like, but it's also wrong. So I don't he know. comes like, off he, as being unserious, but yeah. I think he cares secretly, okay. secretly. So I think he actually, I think he's actually been practicing. I respect him as an athlete. He's had some time off to get healthier. I, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm setting markets here, Joe, I'm putting yes at 25 yards. I'll do minus 175. Whoa. Yeah. I'm going to do minus 175. Are you watching these extra points this year? Maybe minus 135 is a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just, you know, I I think that. Does he get a T? What's that? I'd have to assume there's a T or some some holder or something like that. Um, So if you want plus 175. That's 36% for him to miss. Actually, that's probably really good odds for you. This is why I'm not a bookmaker, Joe. They, like, they, I, they need to show they need to show the video or the picture of Andy Reid from the punt pass and kick competition. When, he was when he's 13 and you know yeah. he's like six feet taller than everyone else. Yeah. Why isn't Andy like if he weren't in this, I'd I would i recruit him to kick it. Like that'd yes. be that'd be great. Oh, you know he would take a tumble, right? You know he'd make <laughs> it though. Notes. He'd he fall, but he'd still it. make it. He's Andy Reid, man. He'd yeah. make it. I, I would make Andy Reid minus 350, you know? Again, this is why I'm not a bookmaker, <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> 350? What? He's minus 350. <laughs> Gronk is minus 175. Uh, me for yes, 65 to 1. Yes Ooh. to make it, 65 to 1. Um, And I would bet against myself. I would happily, happily uh, bet against myself with that no. number. I can't do it, so... I can't Not get lift. Yeah. What would be your number? What if you're bookmaking for Joe Ostrowski making a 25 yard field goal? What's your number? Well, here's here's the other thing. The reality is that those guys are on TV all the time. Like yeah. we would be shaking. We'd be I'd so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately. Like I 268 million people watching me try to kick a field goal. I can't do it. Like we just tried to do one for like the FanDuel social team at one of like the events in Denver, and I biffed it like that was for like three people so no um i'm i'm toast no thanks starting with now we've done that we set our own markets uh for field goals any other things you're seeing value on for this game joe i think that covers it now that you let everyone know you you would poop yourself it's not a hypothetical it's 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 a definitive um i I can say for sure this would happen so 
We'll have yeah. we'll work. Well, I'll tell John Sheeran of FanDuel Sportsbook to get markets up on that next year. Super Bowl Fifty Eight. We'll have a, a brownout market available on FanDuel Sportsbook. Oh my Sportsbook. god. <laughs> That is Joe Ostrowski. Check him out on Twitter at Joe Ostrowski and his very serious show, BetQL Daily, every weekday, 9 to noon Eastern over in Glendale uh, from the BetMGM Sportsbook. Joe, I appreciate you swinging by for today. Good luck to you with your bets for Super Bowl 57 and uh, enjoy Arizona. Thanks for having me, Jim. Uh, best of luck to everyone out there because uh, we're not going to have football for a while until yeah. you're breaking down. What are the other leagues? NASCAR. I forgot. NASCAR. No, 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 no. The other football. We got three football leagues. I'm not now. watching those, Joe. I'm not doing Okay, that. good. <laughs> Remember when we were doing that in the pandemic? Like, that was a whole thing. I um, did play by play for Madden AAF. Streams, Joe. I remember vividly. Oh. It was awful. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. It was real bad for Fandle. <laughs> It was bad, man. Those are dark times. Not just dark because of the, 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 the pandemic. It was dark for other reasons, too. And I'm yeah. not going to revisit that. So we're staying away. We're talking NASCAR instead. Believe me. They told me next week, try, we'll be in it fully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> try, try, try doing a, a nightly four-hour solo show from your basement with no yep. sports on a sports radio station. That's fun. We're past that time, Joe. You survived. <laughs> thank, you survived. You're at the Super Bowl yeah. this week. You're thriving. You're yeah, thriving. We're good. You've got the proper attire. You're not pooping yourself on live TV. You're great. You know, you're doing great. You're thriving. Uh, check out Joe on Twitter at Joe Ostrowski. I am on Twitter at Jim Sanas, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Back again tomorrow with JJ Zacharyson, breaking down player props for this game, getting his read on those. We'll talk to you all then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.